with Professor Murchison. In this video, we're going to look at how to add real numbers. So let's start off with an example. Suppose that you have some extra money, and then you have a knack for poker. You lose $3 on the first hand of poker, and then you lose $4 on the second hand. Well, we know that we've lost $7 total. So we can actually represent winning money with a positive number and losing money with a negative number. And we can add and subtract those two values. So since we lost $3 and then we lost $4, we lost a total of 7 Well, since we've lost money, we can use these negative numbers. So we lost $3, so that's negative 3. We're at a loss of $3. And then we lose another $4. Well, we're at a loss of 7 total, so that would be a negative $7. So we're $7 in the hole. So from the equation, you can see that you add negative 3 and you add negative 4. The answer is a negative 7. It's still a negative number when you add two negatives. So we're going to generalize this rule. Adding positive numbers and adding negative numbers. Or you add a combination of one positive and one negative in this section. So what we're going to learn in this section is how do you add in combination positive and negative real numbers, and how do you simplify expressions involving addition and subtraction of real numbers with the order of operations? So add positive and negative numbers first. So let's look at a problem we already know the answer to. So we already know that if we add positive 3 and positive 4, we'll get positive 7. So the 3, let's think of this in terms of a number line. The 3 tells us that if we start at the origin on the number line, we go three units in the positive direction if it's a positive number. So start at the origin and move three units in the positive direction because it's a positive three. So now when you read the addition sign, think of the addition sign as we now move on the number line. So four means you move four units in the positive direction. So if we start at the origin, let's think of this in, on the number line. You start at the origin, And now, if you want to add 3 and 4, you start at the origin and you add 3, you move 3 units in the positive direction, and the positive direction is to the right. And now, you have another add 4, so you move 4 more units to get finally at positive 7. So, 3 plus 4 is positive 7. You can have any combination of 3 and 4. You can have 3 and subtract 4. 4, or you can have 4 and subtract 3, or you can have negative 3 and subtract 4. So we have several different combinations involving addition and subtraction. So let's talk about the rule for adding real numbers first. If you want to add two real numbers with the same sign, so they're both positive or the two numbers are both negative, you add the numbers in absolute value. You take the value of each number, and then you add those values. The answer will always be the sign that the two numbers originally had in common. If the original numbers were both positive, your answer is going to be positive. If both numbers were negative and you're adding, the answer will, will also be negative. So in other words, if both numbers are positive, your answer will be positive. And if both numbers are negative, then your answer will also be negative. If you're adding real numbers. All right, so now the more complicated rule would be what happens if you add real numbers with different signs? And this is the type of problem that most people have trouble with when they're adding real numbers. What happens is you need to subtract the smaller number in absolute value from the larger one. So then your answer when you are when you're adding real numbers with different signs the answer will be the sign of the number that's larger in absolute value. Okay, and then this rule actually covers all possible combinations of addition with real numbers. You can use a number line if you like to use the number line and visualize adding real numbers, but you also can use these rules. If you are adding real numbers and they're the same sign, you add the numbers in absolute value, and then you keep the sign that they have in common. If you're adding two numbers with different signs, you subtract two numbers in absolute value, and then you keep the sign of the larger number. So let's try example one. Adding real numbers. Simple 
identify each of the following expressions involving addition of real numbers. 10 plus 13. Well, let's, now we know the answer is going to be 23, but let's use the rule that we just learned. Both of these numbers are positive, so the answer will be positive. If you take the absolute value of 10, you get 10. The absolute value of 13, you get 13. And 10 plus 13 is 23. You have the same sum. They're both positive. So that means you add the numbers. And you keep the sign. And again, you can also think of this as in terms of a number line. You start at the origin, you go to the right 10 units, and you go again, and there are 13 units because you're adding positive 13. So you'll be 23 units away from the origin on a number line when you're finished. Okay, let's try number two. This time is a slight variation of the same problem. This time it's positive 10, but we're adding negative 13. So those they are opposite signs this time. One's positive 10, the other 13, which means the rule says subtract the two numbers. So subtract the numbers. And it says keep the sign in your answer of the, the number with a larger absolute value. So keep the sign of the larger number. So if you take the absolute value of 10, you get 10. You take the absolute value of negative 13, it's 10. So negative 13 is larger in absolute value. So you subtract the number. 13 subtract 10 is 3. But then you keep the sign of a larger number in a value. So negative 13 was larger, and it was negative. So 10 subtract 13 is negative 3. Okay, number 3. Negative 10 plus 13. So this time, again, you have opposite signs. Which means you're going to subtract the numbers. And keep the sign of a larger number. Correct. So, absolute value of negative 10 is 10. The absolute value of 13 is 13. So, 13 is larger in absolute value, and 13 is positive. So, the answer will be positive. So, track the numbers. 13 to track 10 is 3, and we said the answer will be positive. So, the answer is positive 3. All right, let's try one more combination. This time we have negative 10 plus negative 13. So, notice that they have the same sign, negative 10 negative 13, so same. That means you add the numbers. So because they have the same sign, and you keep the sign they have in common. So negative 10 plus negative 13, you add the numbers. 10 plus 13 is 23, but since they're both negative, you keep the negative. So negative 23. So all four possibilities of adding real numbers with one positive, one negative, both positive, and also both negative. All right, let's see how we can combine this using the order of operations. So remember from the previous section, we talked about order of operations. We have parentheses first, or grouping symbols first, exponents second, multiplication and division going from left to right, and then finally addition and subtraction, which should be the last step. So example two, order of operations. Simplify each of the following expressions using the order of operations. Negative five plus two plus negative seven. So there's only addition in the problem, plus two plus negative seven. So go from left to right. Negative five plus two. Negative five plus two is negative three. So they are opposite signs. Negative five, positive two. Subtract the two numbers. Five subtract two is three. But negative 5 is larger in absolute value than 2. So then we also have negative 7 to add still. Negative 
3 plus negative 7 gives you negative 10. Same sign, so you add the numbers and then keep the sign. All right, number 2. Negative 4 plus square bracket 2 plus negative 3 close bracket plus negative 1. So again, you only see addition in the problem. So let's go from left to right. But we do have group principles to do first. So let's do that inside parentheses or inside the brackets first. You have 2 plus negative 3. That's negative 1. And then you have a plus negative 1 outside the, the square brackets as well. So now I'll go from left to right. Negative 4 minus 1, or negative 4 plus negative 1 gives you negative 5. And then plus negative 1 again gives you negative 6. Okay, number 3. Time there's exponents involved. So let's make sure we do exponential expressions first. You have 4 times 2 to the 5th power plus 3 times i squared. So we have 4 times 2 to the 5th power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You have 5 2's all together. That gives you 32. And then plus 3 times 5 squared is 5 times 5, or 25. So 4 times 32 plus 3 times 25. Make you do addition last. You do multiplication next. So 4 times 32 is 132. Plus 3 times 25 is 75. And then when you add, again, these are the same, same sign, both positive numbers. So you add to get 207, and the answer will also be positive. All right, one, you have negative 10 plus 4 inside parentheses, plus negative 3, plus inside the parentheses, negative 3 plus 8, and then outside the parentheses, 6 plus 6. So only addition and grouping symbols. So let's do the grouping symbols first. Negative 10 plus 4, that's negative 6, plus negative 3, plus another grouping symbol, negative 3 plus 8 is 5, and then you have plus 6. So again, now we'll go from left to right. Negative 6 plus negative 3, they are the same sign, and you're adding. So you add the two numbers, and you keep the sign. They have a moment. So negative 9 plus 5 plus 6. So negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4 plus 6. And negative 4 plus 6 is 2, positive 2. All right, and now the last two problems in this section do some application involving sign numbers, adding and subtracting sign numbers. So example three, temperature change. The temperature in Lansing, Michigan at noon is 12 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. However, by 1 p.m., the temperature has risen 4 degrees. And then after sunset, the temperature fell by 7 degrees by 6 p.m. Write an expression first using real numbers to describe this situation. And what was the temperature in Lansing at 6 p.m.? Keep in mind that the starting temperature is negative 12 degrees. The temperature was 12 degrees below zero. So it's below zero, it's negative 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So now let's write an expression that describes this situation. You're starting the day, or you're starting at noon, according to this problem, at negative 12 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature rose, or had risen 4 degrees, so you're adding positive 4 degrees, and then by 6 p.m. the temperature had fallen 7 degrees, so you're adding negative 7 degrees Fahrenheit. Now keep in mind, if you're adding negative 7, that's the same thing as subtracting 7. So this becomes an a adding sign number problem. You have a 12 plus 4, that's negative 8. So by 1 p.m., we were still 8 below 0. And then the temperature had fallen 7 degrees by 6 p.m. So now we're at negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit at 6 o'clock. So keep in mind, if the temperature rose, it's positive. 
and if the temperature fell, you're actually adding a negative number. Okay, so example four, last one. This time you can actually do adding sign numbers in, involving it an account balance. So checking account balance. Suppose your checking account balance was overdrawn by $12. In other words, the balance is negative 12. So that is the starting balance. Negative 12. You electronically deposit $40. So you're adding $40 into your account. So you're taking the starting balance, which is negative $12. And you're adding positive $40. Translate this situation into an addition problem. Well, we did negative 12 plus 40. And then figure out what your new balance of your checking account is. Well, negative 12 plus 40. These are opposite signs. One's negative 12 and the other one's positive 40. So you subtract the numbers. And then you keep the sign of the larger number in absolute value. So 40 subtract 12 is 28. And it's positive because 40 is bigger than 12. And so, so this new balance. So now we're plus $28 in the checking account because we deposited $40. So this finished up our section on adding sign numbers. Keep in mind that there's a rule involving adding sign numbers. If you add two numbers with the same sign, you add the numbers like normal and you keep the sign they have in common. So if you're adding two positive numbers, the answer is positive. If you're adding two negative numbers, the answer will be negative. If you're adding two numbers with opposite signs, you subtract the numbers like we did in example four and you keep the sign of the larger number. So this finishes up our video on adding numbers. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know or if you have any of the problems in the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about subtracting real numbers.